Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be breaking down the premiere of Season 7, Episode 1. I'm so excited to talk about it with you because there was so much that went down, so we have so much to break down and go through. I've got so many notes, so we're going to get through them bit by bit, so please be sure to stick it out throughout this whole video if you want to hear everything. Okay, so yes, this episode was really good and I think they did a really good job of making this into a premiere episode because if you guys didn't know this was supposed to be the third to last episode of last season and it would have just been like a world's heavy episode and this obviously was world's heavy but it was not what I expected because we had a lot of stuff go down and Wells's ending was shocking because spoiler alert Wells is dead all right we're gonna get to that but just for now, let's start at the start of the episode. So Chester and Barry are working on getting his speed back, working on the artificial speed force. And so he's in this kind of chamber, preserving his speed. Don't know what the exact words were. And so he comes out of here, and then you get to see a brand new addition to the suit. It's not a brand new suit. However, it is a brand new addition because his cow sort of goes over his face. It kind of phases over his head. And so this is very much so similar to what his cow was like in the New 52 where it kind of phases over his head. And it's also similar to Supergirl's tech on her current suit where she can literally just power it on and it sort of goes around her. Well, they haven't done that in a while, but yeah, this is a new addition and it's cool because there's always a new addition or a new suit in the new season. So this is it for the Flash season seven for now. So that was very cool and that was a great way to start the episode. At first I was like, hmm, I haven't watched The Flash in a while, did Barry do that last season? But turns out, no he didn't, but yeah, that was really cool with his cow. Okay, so Barry versus Eva, we have him going after her, and so she's like, oh, my fractal photons move at the speed of light, and then, you know, she basically defeats him, she goes to another warehouse, take down some black hole guys. So Barry is really struggling with his speed, he's at like 1% speed, Chester said at the start of the episode. And so, basically, she kills the original Mirror Master, and it's revealed that Eva created Mirror Master. Now, that was a cool twist I was not expecting, because we knew that he would make a cameo appearance. Obviously, the same actor wasn't back, I believe it was just like a stand-in, then he basically shattered into a mirror when Eva killed him. However, it was a cool reveal that the original Mirror Master that we saw on the show was a creation of Eva, because it's Eva's Mirrorverse after all so that's something new for the show and i thought that was cool okay so you have fake barry with iris and so it's inside iris's mind and throughout this whole episode iris is basically facing off against you know a mirror version of herself and it's a creation in her mind but it's also eva as well manipulating her because she's getting pretty close to kind of understanding the mirror verse and potentially getting out very soon and that is teased towards the end of the episode, but we'll get more into what's happening with Iris just in a minute. So you got like Sue and Ralph off the grid, they're mentioned in this. Obviously we don't have the goodbye scene with Ralph in this episode. I reckon that's gonna be like episode two or three. And then, you know, his story is gonna be fully wrapped up because Hartley got fired in the summer. And so let's move on. So this episode was a lot to do with Worlds because he's working on the artificial speed force. He's trying to get Barry's speed back. And you see Nash talking to all the different versions of Worlds. There is a new Worlds, Awesome Worlds, which is an obvious reference to the real Awesome Worlds director of Citizen Kane, famous director, if you guys didn't know. So that's the reference right there. Then you have all these other versions of Worlds coming back, like HR's back. You see Harry is back, obviously from Earth 2. I think you had Thorn at one point, and so there is like a whole bunch of different ones, and so every Worlds that we've seen and some that we haven't seen is inside of him, and so he has this whole internal struggle throughout this whole episode, and so he realizes at this point that he must die in order to give Barry speed back. So it's something about like an organic kind of conduit, like transferring through an organic person but it will in the end kill them and so this is Nash's kind of arc overcoming his anxieties and basically becoming a hero and so just after this you have Iris facing off against Iris and you realize that it's been evil all this time messing with her well this actually comes at you know the next Iris scene which is with her and an older version of herself and then so we move on to the next thing and we have this message that Eva finds, and it's from Joseph, right? From Joseph Carver, her husband, who she absolutely hates. She chooses not to watch it, 
However, we're gonna skip to the end of the episode, the final scene, because it reveals that Eva is actually dead. Now, I don't know what is completely going on, but it seems like this version of Eva we're seeing is like a duplicate, or just like a mirror image rather than the real person. So, I'm kind of confused. However, it maybe explains something similar to the original Mirror Master literally shattering when he got shot. So, I don't know if there's an actual explanation, but that was an interesting twist that literally Eva died, and so she probably buried somewhere. So, I have no idea what's going on with that. I really need your input on that because I don't think it was 100% sure. I'm sure we're going to get some sort of wrap up next episode and it also gives her some sort of hesitation about what she's doing because she says this has all been a lie or something and you know her mission was to destroy Carver when Carver was like freaking out over Eva dying so you know this secret tape is gonna be a big thing to change her so also throughout this episode you have the top who reappears Turns out she is in charge, she's been in control this whole time, even though she's pretending to be like this kind of innocent kind of girlfriend who is a bit klutzy, and you know, pretending that the original Mirror Master was in charge and had all the power. So she has a bunch of scenes with Cecile, and this all leads to the airplane crashing and Barry eventually stopping it. Okay, so let's move on to the next bit. So you have all of this talk with the artificial speed force talking about multiversal particles using Allegra, they give it a go, they shoot it through Barry and it doesn't work and he ends up basically becoming Wells. He inhabits all of these different versions of him throughout the multiverse. And you have this great moment and a great few moments after this, after the ad break, where you have Barry, well Grant, playing Sherlock Wells and his accent is fantastic. It's so funny. This was one of the best parts of the episode. It was just really funny and I think you guys would really like it. Well, hopefully you did like it. Okay, so Barry also becomes like HR, then he becomes Wells the Grey, obviously a take on Gandalf, so that's a reference to Lord of the Rings, but after this he has a sort of seizure, and so he freaks out, basically he is going to die. The only thing keeping him alive is his remaining speed for cells, which are at like 1%, so he is this close to dying. And so it's at this point that Gideon actually returns, and Chester tries to use this mobile version of Gideon to try and get some assistance in trying to save Barry. And so that's just like a small little thing and it's nice to see Gideon back. And then you got Wells just after this revealing that he is the organic receptor. That is what they called it. And he reveals he isn't ready to die. And so you have this whole scene with Allegra and him and basically it's leading up to what's going to happen with Wells towards the end of the episode where he finally comes to the decision that he is happy and he wants to do this. But just quickly going back to what we were talking about, so yes, Wells reveals he's the organic receptor, he isn't ready to die, and then Barry wakes up shortly after this and he puts on the Harry glasses. So it's debatable whether this is actually Eobard Thorne version of Harrison Wells or if this is Harry. However, maybe it was Eobard. But, it's very interesting and it was a great scene seeing Barry actually in glasses, inhabiting this kind of darker version of Wells. I'm gonna say it was probably Wells because of the glasses, so that was a great moment and I really liked it and maybe I can get some extra clarification about some of that stuff. However, you've also got Cecile finding out about the plane like I said, this happens right after that and so Barry needs his speed back. And you have throughout this whole episode them trying to modify the artificial speed force and quite early on Wells realizes oh I need to sacrifice myself in order to give the Flash's powers back because this artificial speed force is not working like they try so many things and it keeps on backfiring and so he thinks of a very dangerous plan and the very dangerous plan does completely backfire because it includes Nash sacrificing himself. And so Barry obviously comes back from being possessed by the Wellses, and so he's his normal self. And then Nash realizes that he must do this, he must sacrifice himself in order to get Barry to become the Flash again, to get his speed back, and basically be the hero he's supposed to be. And so when he does this, he becomes a hero himself. Like, he's going to be missed. And I think the big question around this, obviously he dies, 
that is a huge thing that was a huge shock i had no idea that was coming and that completely came out of the blue and was one of the best scenes in the episode because you have barry crying he's extremely sad and he knows that if this version of wells dies all those other versions of worlds from out there in the multiverse well the ones we know and have seen in this episode actually are going to die with him because they have basically collapsed into this one version that being nash wells on earth prime and so it remains to be seen if we're going to see any version of wells again and i hope we do i really don't want tom to leave obviously there's a chance that reverse flash can still be here because reverse flash actually escaped from nash wells back in last season so that is still a possibility to see harrison wells return well obviously eobard thorn but eobard thorn version of harrison wells and so yes barry's crying and wells all of the team try and comfort barry you have harry from earth 2 returning to talk to Barry to comfort him as Nash gets ready to sacrifice himself and so you see the death scene and he disintegrates via multiversal particles coursing through his body coursing through his veins and basically making him disintegrate and it was a great scene even though it was very sad and I had no idea that was gonna come I thought it was just like a normal Harrison Wells episode where it was just gonna focus on Nash focus on Allegra but also focus on the artificial speed force and we knew they were going to get it up and running we knew that barry was going to get his speed back sometime in episode one two or three because we know he has it in the finale which would have been the finale which is now episode three of season seven so this came as a huge shock and a huge surprise and this is one of those great flash moments where it motivates barry to become a greater hero because of someone's sacrifice and so at this point barry runs he becomes the flash again he runs around inside the speed lab and he's just running normally at first and then with Nash disintegrating and his particles going up into the atmosphere you have the artificial speed force freaking out and you have those blue streaks of lightning you have the normal streaks of lightning and they engulf into Barry they become Barry and Barry returns to the flash because he becomes a speedster once again who has all of his powers basically he's not running on one percent and so that blue lightning stuff that we theorized about wasn't true because that was just the excess residue of that speed force that artificial speed force working for the first time and then as you can see him running outside as he tries to stop the plane his lightning color is completely normal so that is nothing new i guess the biggest thing in this episode was probably barry getting that new cow i'm talking in terms of like the flash well obviously he got his powers back so that is huge because the artificial speed force officially worked and obviously it came at a cost with nash dying and so chester allegra and barry console each other after this so after barry has saved the day he saved central city Nash has sacrificed himself. The remaining Team Flash members, who were obviously the prominent ones in this episode, all sit down together and talk about what just happened. So it was a great scene, and obviously, it was a great build up to it. And you have Barry with his speed back. He is officially the Flash once again, and he's going to have enough speed to at least put up a good fight against Eva because at the start of the episode, he got completely destroyed by Eva. Like, he had nothing on her. So now with the artificial speed force working, he has a new speed force supply of energy and I'm sure he's going to stop her very soon, sometime in the next few episodes. Okay, so one other thing in terms of the artificial speed force and I'm sure we're going to do a few videos on this later this week. My first question is this. So this is an artificial speed force. This isn't the organic normal speed force where it exists outside of space and time and it's a real place and speedsters get given speed so does barry have the chance and the opportunity to give speed to those who desire it because does this mean that wally isn't gonna have the speed is barry gonna have to connect wally to the artificial speed force and what about all of those speedsters out there in the multiverse i don't know if they're just gonna ignore it when they introduce other speedsters say oh yeah you know the speed force still exists on another earth in the multiverse i guess that's a possibility However, it does exist outside of space and time, so that means that the normal speed force would apply to everywhere in the multiverse, but I guess they can make up an excuse for that. If not, if they actually stick to the rules, they're going to have to find a way to give the powers from the artificial speed force machine and from Barry, because Barry is literally the speed force now. 
and transfer it into other species like Wally West if he ever returns. So moving towards the last bit of the episode, so we have Iris still stuck in the Mirrorverse and we know that Barry is going to be trying to get Iris out of the Mirrorverse next episode. That is going to be a heavy thing. Remember my trailer breakdown for next episode is going to be coming out later today after my Superman Lois episode 2 review and breakdown. So in this scene, Iris has some sort of power that is manifested out of her, and it seems very similar to what Eva can do when she like goes up to mirrors, touches them, she doesn't even really need to touch them, she can just manipulate them because she has that connection. And I feel like Iris has definitely built that connection, and that's what that teaser was at the end of the episode, that she is becoming kind of like Eva, in the way that she can control the Mirrorverse. And so you're going to see like the return of Camilla. And you're going to see Singh at some point probably in the next episode. As they try and break out of the Mirrorverse. And so Iris is becoming very powerful. Even at the end of the episode. She is typing on the laptop. She's typing backwards. So she's able to see normally. And she's able to understand what is happening. So you can see that she's definitely taking a hold of what she has and so like we said, the last scene of the episode, the final extra bit at the end of the episode, was to do with Eva's big revelation that she supposedly died when the particle accelerator blew up. So what the hell is going on with Eva? Is Eva real? Is Eva just like a duplicate? Or is it the real version of Eva? And who died? So I don't know what's going on there, but like I said earlier in the video, please be sure to let me know your theories in the comments down below. I want to know all your thoughts about this premiere episode because it was great and there was so much to go through so thank you guys so much for watching for now remember we're gonna have a superman lois episode 2 review slash breakdown going up later today obviously this is going up very late american time but later on tomorrow my superman lois review is going to be up about 5 30 pm uk time if you guys can translate that and then shortly a few hours after that my flash episode 2 trailer breakdown is coming out so that is the current plan for tomorrow so thank you guys so much for watching this video i look forward to seeing you at those next videos but for now i'll catch you guys later goodbye I see.